All right, folks. So um, we we got our samples prepared. We we have our our reagents transferred to our test tubes. We have some water. Uh, we have our ethyl alcohol, and uh, we have our stains on our on our napkins or paper towels. Now we're ready to test them. Um, so we're going to be testing uh, using two different reagents that are used as presumptive tests to try to identify uh, blood stains. And then we have one reagent that's used uh, in an effort to try to identify uh, semen stains. Now it's important to remember that these tests that we're doing are presumptive tests. They are not confirmatory. They don't uh, positively identify the presence of the fluid because there are some substances which actually can give false positives. Uh, for example, rust, if you test rust using the phenolphthalein reagent or the leukomalachite reagent, uh, which are both used for the identification of blood, uh, rust actually tests positive, even though, of course, it's not blood. So the point of this uh, exercise is for you to, first of all, see how the tests work, but then also to identify some substances that actually might give a false positive. And then to take a look at some substances that kind of look like blood and figure out whether or not they give a positive for some of these tests. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention that you will have in your lab kit is you'll have a, a small vial, this is a large bottle, you're going to have a smaller vial that's labeled as synthetic blood. I and mean, this is a, a substance that we purchase from our forensic distributors, which um, it's not blood, but it, it behaves similarly to blood. And so it's good as a way of testing our reagents to make sure they're actually working. So you're not going to be testing blood, but you're going to be testing some synthetic blood. And I've put a small amount of this synthetic blood on this uh, napkin so that we can actually test it using our reagents. All right, we're going to test uh, using um, the leukomalachite reagent first. All right, to test our stain, we don't want to add our chemicals directly to the stain. What we want to do instead is we want to collect a small amount of stain on our swab and then test the swab itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our swab, our clean cotton swab, and we're going to put one or maybe two drops of water on the end of our swab, just get it moist. All right. And then I'm going to take my swab, my moistened swab, and I'm going to rub it against my stain. And you'll notice that the end of the swab is discolored because some of the stain is collected on the swab itself. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my chemicals. Now the leukomalachite test is uh, a one-step test, meaning the only thing I need to add to the swab is the leukomalachite reagent. So I'm going to go ahead and use uh, my leukomalachite reagent, which is in my test tube here. I'm going to use one of my transfer pipettes. I'm going to suck a small amount of the reagent into my pipette, and then I'm going to drop one or two drops on the end of my cotton swab. And then, if you notice, um, the, the stain turns kind of a dark green, uh, almost bluish color. And that's a positive reaction for the presence of blood. So that's what the leukomalachite test is going to look like. Now, what if we were to test it using the phenolphthalein or the Castlemire? So I'm going to take, a, again, another one of my swabs. I'm going to moisten the end of it with a little bit of water. Notice I'm not touching the end of the pipette to the swab because I don't want to contaminate anything. I'm going to go ahead and rub the swab against my synthetic blood here, collect a small amount of stain on the end of the swab. Now, the phenolphthalein test is a two-step test. Before I actually add the phenolphthalein reagent, I actually first need to add a little bit of ethyl alcohol. So I have a small bottle here. Um, that's labeled ethyl alcohol. Now, I have a dropper here, so I can add it directly from the bottle. If your vial doesn't have a dropper on the end of it, simply use one of your transfer pipettes to add one or two drops of ethyl alcohol to the end. Again, notice I'm not touching the swab to the dropper. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one or two drops of the phenolphthalein reagent. So again, I'm going to add one or two drops. And I'm going to wait and see if I get a reaction. The reaction we're looking for is kind of a, a deepish, kind of a, almost a, a, a pink purple color. Uh, usually it reacts fairly quickly. It may take just a little bit. We can see that now it's starting to react. I'm looking for, again, kind of a deep pink, almost purple color. And that is a positive reaction for the presence of, of blood. All right, now. 
are there other things that could give a positive reaction which are not blood? Um, well, let's try. Um, for example, what if I were to try and test ketchup? So what I have here is a ketchup stain. I'm going to collect some of my ketchup stain on the end of my swab and then test it using these same chemicals. So first I'm going to add a couple of drops of water to moisten the swab. I'm going to rub the swab against my ketchup stain to collect a little bit of sample. All right, so I have a little sample on the end there. Now I'm going to test using the leukomalachite test. Again, it's only a one-step test this time. I don't have to add the alcohol. So I'm going to add a little leukomalachite. Now remember, what color are we looking for? We're looking for a greenish-blue color. I'm going to wait and see if I get a reaction. And we can see that there's no reaction this time. So even though ketchup might look a little bit like blood, uh, it doesn't react the same way that blood does. So that would be a negative. All right, what about other substances? Uh, what about bleach? Bleach is a substance that looks nothing like blood, um, but it might actually react. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of bleach on the end of my cotton swab. You can do this one of two ways. You can either pour a little bit of bleach onto a napkin and then rub the, the napkin. I'm just going to take my cotton swab and just dip it into my bleach solution that's in here in my bottle here. So I'm going to get a little bit of bleach on the end here. All right, so I've got a pretty good amount of bleach here. Don't want to leave the cap off. You can get some pretty heavy fumes if you do. So I'm going to put the cap back on. So I might bleach on the end here. Uh, let's test this one. Uh, we'll, we'll try the uh, phenolphthalein again. So I'm going to add a few drops of alcohol to the end here. And now I'm going to add my phenolphthalein reagent. See if we get a reaction. Again, the color we're looking for is kind of a, a pinkish purple color. Not getting a super strong reaction, uh, but it is, it is starting to turn. So we might call that maybe a weak positive. Let's try the leukomalachite with the, the bleach. I'm going to take a, another swab. I'm going to put a little bit of bleach on the end of here. All right, so we've got some bleach there. I'm going to go back to my leukomalachite. Remember, I don't need the alcohol for the leukomalachite, so I'm just going to add a couple drops of leukomalachite. Again, we're looking for a greenish-blue color this time. And wow, we see almost right away a formation of, of the bluish-green color with the leukomalachite. So you can see that bleach uh, certainly is not blood, but bleach gives us a, a what we call a false positive. So if, if there was a blood stain and someone actually cleaned it with bleach, uh, and then we tested that area, it would actually test positive. But it might not be the blood that's testing positive, it actually might be the bleach. And so if I were filling out my data sheet on my computer, I'd put that the bleach does give a positive for both leukomalachite and for uh, the Castlemire or the phenolphthalein. You can see. Here our, our bleach has turned a little darker pink purple after we get a little bit more time. All right, the other test we're going to do is one that's used for testing uh, semen or seminal fluid, and that's the acid phosphatase test. Uh, we're not going to be testing a known semen stain, but we are going to test a couple of substances that literature indicates might give a false positive, and one of those is simply saliva. Uh, so to collect saliva, all I'm really going to do is I'm going to take one of my cotton swabs, and I'm just going to rub it on the inside of my mouth. To collect a little bit of saliva on the end of my cotton swab here. And then we're going to test it. Again, there are some forensic uh, literature documents, some journal uh, articles that indicate that saliva does give a positive uh, for the acid phosphatase test. Because there is a small amount of acid phosphatase in saliva, but the question is, is there enough to give us a positive reaction? Now the acid phosphatase test is a one-step test. I don't need to add the alcohol. All I need to add is a couple of drops of acid phosphatase. I'm going to add one or two drops of acid phosphatase, the reagent rather. I'm looking for a color similar to what we get with the phenolphthalein, which is a, a reddish uh, purple color. Um, I'm looking on the end here. I'll give it a, a 30 seconds or so. Usually 30 seconds is enough time for it to react if it's going to react. I'm not really seeing much of a reaction. So even though literature indicates that you will get a positive for saliva with the acid phosphatase test, it doesn't appear so that we're getting one now. 
Another uh, substance that in literature indicates that we might get a false positive uh, for the acid phosphatase test is uh, lemon juice. And so I just have some lemon juice that I've gotten from the grocery store here. Uh, I'm just going to put a couple drops of lemon juice on the end of my swab and we'll see if it tests positive. Right, so I have a couple drops of lemon juice now. I'm going to add a couple of drops of my acid phosphatase reagent. And we're looking for a, a high concentration of acid phosphatase. Again, the color we're looking for is a, is a pinkish purple color. And we're going to let it sit for maybe 20 or 30 seconds. Again, I'm not seeing uh, much of a reaction. Maybe if we let it sit a little bit longer, we might. But I think I'm likely to call this a, a no reaction. Um, another substance that you're going to test um, is going to be cauliflower. You need to recreate the tests I've done. You're going, to, you're going to also test the bleach and the lemon juice and the ketchup just like I've done here so you can see for yourself. But then you also need to test the other substances. You should test the, the barbecue sauce and the Worcestershire sauce and uh, the apple and things. And then, and then make sure you fill out your worksheet and then send me your worksheet to get credit for this exercise. So that's how you do the phenolphthalein test, the leukomalachite test, and the acid phosphatase test. And then I'm going to record another video to show you how to apply the luminol. All right, folks, um, you know, we've been using these uh, leukomalachite reagents. Um, we use them a little differently than they're used in the field uh, in that we actually dump the contents into a test tube. I want to show you just quickly in a video how they're actually used in the field, though, so you know if you ever, if you have to, do ever have to use them uh, on the job, you know actually how they're used. Uh, so I have um, on my napkin here just a, a blood stain that... Uh, is some of the synthetic blood. I'm going to go ahead and collect a little bit on the end of the uh, swab here. Um, and then I'm going to use uh, the, the kit here, or this uh, reagent vial. Um, what we're going to do to use it the way that they're done in the field is um, go ahead and just take the cap off. Um, what we did was uh, we broke them and dumped them out. We're actually going to leave the chemicals inside here. Uh, what we're going to do is just going to go ahead and squeeze and break the, the vials that are in here to mix the reagents together. So I'm going to go ahead and squeeze and break those. I'm going to break up the glass there uh, so that chemicals can mix together. Um, this time, though, we're going to leave the little um, cotton swab stopper on the end, and we're going to go ahead and just let the chemicals uh, soak into that, um, and it will kind of uh, saturate the, the swab on the end. So we're not actually going to... Uh, take the chemicals out. We're going to leave them uh, in here. We're going to let them saturate the swab. Then all we would do to use this in the field is we'd simply uh, touch the end of our swab to our chemicals here and then we would look for a positive change. You can see that we're getting a positive reaction which is that bluish green color. Uh, and then we'd simply throw this away. The reason we didn't do the, uh, the test this way for our exercises is whenever you touch the end of it uh, you contaminate the end of it, so you really can only use this once uh, using it this way. Uh, we wouldn't want to use the same one to test multiple things because we've already contaminated the end by touching it to the end. Um, so anyway, that's how these are done in the field. So if you ever have to use these in the field, uh, this, is, this is how it's done.